Today we're talking ECMs, what you need to know before you get into messing with them, swapping them, programming them, etc. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and if you've been following along with Project Country Club, you'll know that we've been having some issues getting it running. And it all kind of stems back to the same problem. We had to do an ECM swap from the factory, which was an E22, real weird kind of setup that's not supported by any tuning software, to the E67, which is what they went to during the introduction of the XLRV. It is a North Star based engine, so there's not a lot of information out there. And it turns out that the pre-2007 motors used a 24x reluctor wheel on the crankshaft. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, there are two different setups in the GM lineage for the most part. Back in the early stuff, LS1, LS6, early North Stars, they used a 24x uh, crank position sensor. And then on the cams, they used what is a 1x. And that's how they know where everything is so they can initiate things like injection and ignition. So if that does not line up to the ECM that you are using, it doesn't work. The timing's completely off doesn't run right and the problem is is you can't really switch between the two without actually changing out the reluctor wheels the sensors and then in the case of something like the north start you've got four cam position sensors on this thing because you've got four cam positions uh, which is crazy so Back in the day, it was a 24 tooth position uh, on the crank, and then it was just a 1x on the uh, cam, which basically lets you know if the cam was on intake or exhaust. That works fine on the push rod style on the uh, North Star is completely different, but you need to keep these things in mind. So let's talk about how you can tell what goes where, etc. whenever it comes to making sure that you have the right ECM for your swap platform. This is gonna help a lot of the guys that are doing retro mod swaps, things like that. May not help some of you guys out that are uh, already working on factory ECM setups, but there is some good information to be gleaned on the different software that we can load up on these uh, ECMs. And I'll talk about that also. Okay, one of the first good documents to check out is Lincoln Felter has a awesome uh, PDF out there. I'll put links to all this stuff down in the description that shows you exactly what the different cam and crank reluctor wheels look like. As you can see, there is the 1X, the 4X stuff for the cams. It shows you the different years for the different cams, how it moved throughout the years, gives you an illustrated guide to both of these kind of setups. And the cool thing about it is, is if you scroll down, it has a list of all the ECMs and what they are set up to operate. Now, granted, this document's only gonna cover the majority of like the basic GM stuff out there. If you're looking for something weird like the North Star, it's probably not gonna be on there. Some of the 3800s may not, the V6 stuff. Still use a crank position sensor, so be aware. It is a different setup, but if you're working on V6 stuff, you're probably you know well aware that like, it's going to not be a 4X generally. Uh, that being said, how do you tell if you're going out to pull a motor to see what's on there? Well, for one of them, it's where the camshaft sensor is located. If the camshaft sensor is on the front timing cover, that's going to be a Gen 4 version. It's going to be generally a 4X, though there are some 1X LS2s out there. The LS2 is kind of that transitional period between the LS1 and the LS3. Uh, where the LS3 is the full 4 gen. And then on top of it, uh, you can look at the actual crank position sensor on the side of the block. It's usually by the starter. There's two colors. There's a gray one and a black one. The black one is the old 24X style. The gray one is going to be the 58X. And that means it's the more modern gen 4. So keep that in mind if you're going to pull a block out because there's nothing more frustrating than go pull a motor, get home, realize that it's not gonna work on your platform. And that's where we get into kind of the other side of it. Using ECMs to control different things. At the base of what these things are, they're just little computers. They have a lot of different operating systems that go on there that are vehicle uh, specific that are going to determine how it works on that. So if we go over to EFI Live's list, 
We can see a great list of different operating systems that work on the different service models for the ECMs. The E67 is the one that I'm working on. They've got the E38, the E67 list. Uh, and it's a good idea to go through there and verify which operating system that you're going to want to use. And in fact, to give you an idea, the uh, ECM that I was holding up earlier was out of an 06 Malibu Max, but the operating system on it is for a 2009 Corvette ZR1. So literally, Probably one of the weakest cars in the lineup has the operating system for the most powerful car in the lineup. That's because the base hardware is the same. Now keep in mind that there is some year differences once you get between uh, 2010 and beyond. Uh, some of that software is not very compatible. I will leave a link to the EFI document that talks about that in particular, but I've had luck, as I said, going out to 2009, writing it to a 2006 ECM. Now, why would you wanna do that? Well, for one, the tables are different. Some of the tables that are on this version of the software do not exist on the other software. And a prime example of that is whenever I loaded up both a 2006 XLRV and a 2007 XLR, both on the E67 platform, which is what was used on the turbo or the supercharged Corvettes, but you'll go in and notice that a couple of the tables are different, and there's a quick way of identifying that. So here we have the two comparison files from the 2006 XLRV and the 2007 XLR. You'll notice whenever we're in compare mode, there's some of these boxes that are gray. And that is because on the base file that we're working in, they exist there, but they don't exist on the compare file. And a prime example that you'll run into is on the different way that fuel flow is based on if it's an NA or a forced inducted platform. So keep that in mind. Do your research, go out to the Tune repository, download examples from different platforms, and choose the one that's going to fit your situation best. So if you're going to use this in an NA application, you don't ever have to worry about going forced inducted on there, but you still want to use the E67 because it has a faster processor and more memory, then go out and try and line up with the tables that you're wanting to see on there. That is why I'm using the XLRV. Now, that being said, it is a little bit different on the pinouts for the different OSs. A prime example is the starter enable pin on the XLRV ECM is on X156. That's moved to X126 on the ZR1. So you need to be able to have access to the pinout diagrams to make sure that you can get the pinouts correct. The other interesting fact about it is, is that firing order cannot be adjusted within the software itself. That is hard coded on the ECM, but all you do is just change the pinouts based on your firing order. That one kind of made my brain spin for a bit whenever I pulled up the pinout for the ZR1 and noticed that all the injectors and ignition uh, triggers were in different locations. That's because the North Star has a different firing order than the LS. Just keep that in mind. And the reason that that is, is generally whenever you're dealing with something like that where it is very time sensitive to get off a fire and ignitions, you know, uh, trigger something like that it is using an interrupt in the ECM that's being triggered by the crank position and so that is just easier to hard code that order and then make the changes on the wiring itself now you may be wondering how you can find out which operating systems on the ECM that you're already connected to you can do this through both the scanner and the editor if you go up into the details of the calibration or if you go into the details while you're hooked up with the scanner it will show you what the main operating system is that is going to be the one that we reference if we go into something like SPS and look up the operating systems now there's different ways that you can find the operating systems one of the easiest ways is to do a VIN lookup over at AC Delco's TDS Tech Connect that will pull up a list of all of the updated software that's available and it will break it down as to which operating systems are on there and of course you're going to want to run the latest operating system if you are updating an ECM because it's going to have any kind of changes to the software that need to be made for things like DTCs that weren't acting properly etc so make sure whenever you check that out to uh, use the latest version of the software if you are programming your own ECMs now in order to do this you are going to have access to SPS uh, but you know if you are already doing this you have a VIN number that you can plug in there do the subscription for the uh, two-year VIN option go into SPS instead of launching SPS itself we are looking for calibration information like we see here in the corner once we've got that opened up we can punch in the VIN number and search using it to see what calibrations for the different modules are available out there 
In this case, we dig down through the list, find the PCM. Sometimes it's listed as an ECM, sometimes it's listed as a PCM. Find that, go ahead and select next, and it is going to show us the operating system that are available for this specific VIN, this platform, this vehicle, this variation of the ECM. Now here on the list, you can see on the main operating system, all the different variations that are on there. And the one at the bottom of the top list is going to be the most recent, which happens to be the one at the top of the bottom list. But you can also see what changes were made for each iteration of it. You know, it's a great source to go out there. Make sure that this uh, operating system is supported with the ECM that you're using by using the service number on it and the EFI Live uh, compatibility matrix for the E38s and E67s. Outside of that, you're just going to have to do your research, but there will be plenty of information out there uh, specifically on the older ECMs, what all works, what does not work. It gets a little bit more muddier on the fourth generation stuff. And so the extra help of having these documents available will get you through figuring out what you need to do for your setup. So what happens if you do end up with a mismatched vehicle? Well, if you have a 58X block and you're trying to use it with a 24X controller, there are devices out there like the one that Lingenfelter makes that will actually take the 58X signal and reduce it down to a 24X signal. Unfortunately, you can't go back the other way. You can't add resolution to a lower resolution signal. People have tried. It just doesn't really work. It's not that accurate. You're basically having to guess in between different pulses where you normally have an actual physical signal that's going to be drawn in there. So that being said, some of the other options you have is you can change the reluctor wheel. Can on a North Star, have to change the whole crank, have to change all the cams out. It's a very in-depth, expensive process on a North Star, but on a lot of the LSs, getting to that reluctor wheel is pretty easy to do. Getting to the cam uh, wheel is even easier, but the question is whether or not it's ground into the back of the cam or if it's on the front of the cam. So that kind of situation gets a little bit muddy, but there's information out there available on the web. The other option is to do an external mount uh, reluctor wheel on the front of the dampener and then doing a sensor mocked up on it that way. A lot of guys do that. You'll see guys doing that on dynos, things like that, whenever they are running uh, crank trigger as opposed to distributors. But that all being said, hopefully this sheds a little light on some of the issues, the issues that I'm running into right now on Project Country Club, and maybe we'll save somebody the heartache, the frustration of going out, getting the wrong ECM, or getting the wrong block with the wrong crank trigger out there, and then fighting to figure out what it is. So, uh, as always, I want to thank all the supporters out there. I want to thank all the new patrons. Make sure you check out the links down in the description. If you have any questions, you have any comments, I'm by no means an expert. I'm learning a lot of this as I go, having to dig up a lot of the information. Hit up the comments. That helps everybody out, not just me, but everybody else that's watching to ask questions, get answers, provide solutions, things like that. So, as always, I want to thank you for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.